Okay, right. So I know that a lot of people have had mocks recently, both GCSE and A-levels. And I just um, wanted to make this video because I wanted to share my input on, okay, if you messed up your grade, what do you do? If you didn't get the grade you wanted, what do you do? You probably feel a lot of stress. You probably feel a lot of anxiety. You probably feel a lot of, oh my gosh, I messed up now. Can I do this degree because I messed up on these grades for my first year of A-levels? Or, oh my gosh, I, I'm i still not getting the grades and GCC is coming up. What do I do? I'm going to be very real. I'm going to be very honest and I'm going to be very to the point. So if you can't take the truth, don't watch this video. It's not for you. But then if you want to improve, and you want to know how to get better grades and why you're not getting the grades, then this video is for you because I'm just going to say the truth. So look, I'll, I'll, I'll just say straight away, like if you didn't get the grades, it's really down to don't blame the exam being hard. Don't blame on the teacher being hard or not helping you out. Don't blame on your school not doing much. Blame it on yourself you haven't done the work that is required. And what I mean by that is you haven't done the right work that is required to be able to do well in the exam. It's very simple. And I've said this so many times in my previous videos, but it's like, it's easy when something goes wrong to put the blame on someone else or put the blame on something else, but we don't tend to look at ourselves. Now, if you've done, if you didn't get the grade, there is something that you have done not right, which caused the grade to be the grade that you have. And you have to now look at yourself and see where you went wrong. So very simply, very, very simply, you're gonna go through these emotions right now, right? You're feeling these emotions of, oh, I feel dumb, I feel stupid, I feel like I'm not good enough. But okay, spend one or two days feeling those emotions. Once those emotions have gone, you need to start thinking and looking at things rationally. Okay, where did I go wrong? Get the paper back, number one. Look at the questions that you went wrong. It's very simple, right? You look at where you went wrong. Oh, okay, question three, four on these topics, I did not get it right because I'm still struggling. Okay, that's information. That is information that you now can take and go and do something about it as opposed to being in this emotional state. If you know the things that you went wrong, that is feedback. And that feedback is what you use to learn from so you don't make that same mistake again. You take that feedback of the topics that you struggle with and you go and learn it again. You go and do questions again. You go and understand it again, which when I say understand it again is I mean you go in depth in trying to understand what the topic is so I have a better understanding. This is a real, like what I'm explaining here is when shit goes wrong in life as well. It's not just for this. Like when things go wrong in life, you have to evaluate yourself of what happened here. Why did it go wrong? Where did I lose track? Where, where did I mess up? And then you reevaluate and then you take that feedback and use it so that you don't make that same mistake again. It's all good blaming people. It's all good blaming the teacher. Oh, the, the teacher was rubbish. The teacher didn't help me to teach. Okay, cool, fine. What are you doing? What did you do then? Instead of complaining to the teacher or complaining the teacher's bad or complaining this is bad, what are you doing? What responsibility have you taken? Because if you can't take responsibility for things that you did that was wrong, then how are you going to take responsibility when you grow up in life? Like, really ask yourself that question. How can you take the responsibility that, oh, I messed up, but it's not my fault. It's this person's fault, or it's because of this, but it's not my fault. I got a C, or I got a D, or I got a B, but it's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> really. I did say this is going to be truthful. I did say this is going to be probably harsh as well, and it will be. But look. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. It's very simple, right? If you didn't get the grade, you need to sit back and look at your paper and see where you went wrong. And then you address those issues one by one. I'm not saying you go all in, you, go, you, you, you still got time, but let this be a wake up call to you if you didn't get the grade. Let this be a wake up call to be like, okay, I messed up, but I'm glad that this, I messed up now and did not mess up in the real exam because then it'll be, damn it, I might have to retake the year. I've messed up, the, I've messed up everything. So this is good. You should look at it as a good sign that you've got that wake up call now. 
Now the question is, what are you going to do about it? What exactly are you going to do when this has happened? How are you going to react to it? Are you going to still complain? Are you going to still be emotional about it? Are you not going to take any action? Now, this is, this is the thing. What action are you going to do? Stop looking at these videos that just, you know, give you the theory. Just go and do, take action. That's how you're going to get far. That's how you build confidence is you take action. Very simple. I even said this in my class videos. You can see that in the previous videos where I teach students maths. I say, you're never going to improve in maths unless you take action and you start practicing the question and you sit down. I can motivate you as much as you want. You'll feel good. Trust me. I've had a lot of people say this. Oh, video, you're such a great motivator. I'm not a motivational guy, like motivational speaker. I don't look at myself like that. I look at myself as, okay, there's a problem. How do you solve it? And you take action, operate, execute. Because I can give you the motivation right now. Cool. You're, you're motivated. You feel good. But then what are you going to do once the video is finished? That is what is the most important thing is the action that you're going to take after watching the video because that action is what builds confidence in you is what's going to detract yourself from this emotional state that you're in and you'll be like you know what i'm going to sit down and i'm going to start again okay i'm building some momentum good i'm so glad that i did this because i'm learning from my mistake and that confidence starts building momentum and when you build momentum you get better you improve and you grow action is everything Too many people just talk. They just talk, 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 talk. Too much talking, too much noise. All these social media, YouTube, it's talk, 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 talk. Like, shut up. No one gives a shit. Shut up, seriously. That's what it is. It's just talk. Opinions, 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 opinions. How about you just do, take action? Just do. You don't believe me? Go and see my videos. I teach. I don't complain. I like when things don't go right, I just get on with it. I find a way, okay, where, where did it go wrong? Why did it go wrong? And I resolve it and carry on. That's it. Of course, you're going to get emotional. I understand that. I sympathize with you, of course. But this is what I said earlier is be emotional or, you know, let the emotion, feelings, everything take place for a day or two. Now, once that's gone, you start making a plan of what you're going to do so that when the real exam comes in June, May, June, you're ready for it now. And you don't make that same mistake again. This is the thing. It's okay that it's okay when someone makes a mistake fine but it's not okay when you know you made a mistake and you're not willing to rectify that mistake that's on you i believe you can do it i believe you can still make this work i believe you can still get the grade that you want but this all comes down to you which is your action. What action are you taking? Now, what I mean action, right? If you don't know what to do, if you don't know how long to study, if you don't know, you know, you, you can't concentrate, I'll give you something very basic, very, very simple. Okay. And you can use this as a, as a format to how you want to study is that, okay. You say, if you can't focus for more than an hour, for example, start with 30 minutes every day, 30 minutes, you sit down and you do the work for 30 minutes on the things that you struggle with based on the exam results that you just got, the topics. You build that 30 minutes for five days. You do that every day for five days, Monday to Friday, okay? And then the following week, you increase that 30 minutes by 15 minutes, so now it becomes 45 minutes. So the following week, Monday to Friday, you now do 45 minutes. And then the following week, you increase that by another 15 minutes, so it becomes an hour. So you do that Monday to Friday for one hour. What you're doing is you're building a habit but starting small. You're not going all in because it becomes too intimidating. If you say you're gonna do two, three hours in one go, it's too much. You're not gonna do it. You're not gonna be motivated to do it. So if you bring that boundary or that barrier low and say, okay, I'm gonna start with 30 minutes, 30 minutes is very doable and from Monday to Friday as you build that 30 minutes you build a capacity to then you're like oh okay you know what I actually can do 30 minutes it's not as hard as I thought okay let me increase that by 15 minutes 45 minutes this is how you build capacity this is what brings this is how you take action but that action now becomes a habit and that habit now becomes instilled in you so now you don't want to not do it because you've been doing this for all these days so you don't want to kind of cut off the streak if that makes sense I don't want to sound like someone who 
brings people down. Well, <laughs> I hope not. I'm not bringing you down. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay, now you can sugarcoat in however way you want. You can make excuses however way, way you want. But at the end of the day, the truth is the truth. If you're not putting the work in to get the grade that you want, but then you complain when you don't get the grade you want, that is on you. You did not take the enough or the required action for you to be able to do that. Now, of course, if you do all of those things and you still don't get the grade, then that's a different story. But right now, I believe that most of you haven't put enough work or haven't put enough right work for you to get that grade. Don't, like I've had this with another couple, few students as well. They, they say, oh, everyone else did bad in the class. So, you know, the, the exam was hard. Who cares? Why does it matter that everyone else did bad as well when you did bad? I know why, because it makes you feel better. Oh, because when you got bad, but then you know that everyone else has done bad. It's like, oh, okay, everyone else did bad. The exam was hard, so that's why. It makes you feel better for you not getting the grade. But why should you care about what someone else has got or not? Why should that be any of your business? Your business should be you messed up. So you that's what you should be looking at, not what looking at the other people and, oh, they got bad as well. So, okay, it's okay. That makes me feel better. That's a cop out. That's weak. It, it's none of your business if someone gets an A star or someone gets a D. It's your business to know where you are going wrong and doing something about it and then focusing on that. Because if you're not willing to take this seriously, when the May and June exam comes, don't, you know, there's no point of you thinking about, oh my gosh, when, it's, when, when the results day comes in August, to think, oh my gosh, I didn't get the grade when you didn't really do much. Take these action. Let this be a wake up call and learn from it. And if you can learn from it and start doing this now, you still got time. It's still doable. But if, if you don't want to do anything about it and you want to complain and blame and be emotional all the time and not take action, okay, cool. That's on you. No problem. But the world doesn't care. The world keeps moving. In the end, you're the one who's going to be left behind. I'm not saying that education all university and everything is important it's like the end will be i am not saying that whatsoever because you can still be successful without all of that but what i am saying is the principles is your principles if, if you say you're going to do something you follow through it no matter what your principles should be intact your foundations your values and principles should be what they are your word should be your bond these are things that are important that will carry you through the rest of your life when you grow into adulthood as well. And you apply that in your other things that you're going to go in life, other ventures, relationships. Let this be a learning lesson. You still can do this. Get on with it. Take the actions right now and start doing. Stop complaining. Stop moaning. Look at where you went wrong. Don't look at what anyone else is doing. Look at where you went wrong and start doing something about it. And you do that, you'll be good. If you don't, then that's on you.